which I'm sure a lot of you guys are pretty familiar with the Larry Nassar case. If you're not familiar with the name, this was the man who was a gymnastics doctor who basically as the doctor of like all of these like Olympic women, there were hundreds of young girls that came into his office and hundreds of them were abused and sexually assaulted. A couple people sent me the sentencing from the judge and apparently the judge rips into this man like no other. But also what happens in the Larry Nassar trial was the women, certain women that wanted to speak up, we've seen them before in victim impact statements, they faced him in court and they said everything to him that they've wanted to say over the years. This could be kind of a sensitive subject, but you know, guys, think of it as all of these women getting to face their abuser together and rip him to fucking shreds, right? We're just talking about justice. I understand that sexual assault is a really heavy topic, but I, I say this all the time. If that's like never been something that has happened to you before, you are the person that needs to hear these women's words more than anyone because it comes up all the time. These stories come up all the time. You will have friends that share stories of sexual abuse with you. And if you've just kind of been like, I don't want to talk about it. That's too sensitive. That's too much. You will not know the pain they felt. So if you have, if that's never happened to you before and you just sat here for 30 minutes with me listening to these women's statements, I thank you so fucking much for just like being like, yo, I haven't experienced this, but I need to know what's up and I want to be there for my friends if it ever happens. Like, thank you. Thank you. Your Honor, thank you for the opportunity to make this statement here today. And thank you for providing the time and flexibility for all the other brave survivors to make their statement. Each survivor deserves to be heard equally. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I would be here today. I was scared and nervous. It wasn't mm -hmm. until I started watching the impact statements from the other brave survivors yes! that I realized I too needed to be here. Yes! Larry. You do realize now that we, this group of women you so heartlessly abused over such a long period of time, are now a force and you are nothing. <laughs> we are here, we have our voices, and we are not going anywhere. Look at that look she gave him. She looked right at that motherfucker too. And now Larry, it's your turn to listen to me. When somebody makes you feel powerless, voiceless, we talked a little bit about learned helplessness. It's where you just freeze, you just let go, and you just accept that you have no power. That is a lot of time, that is definitely what all of these women felt. And that can happen in a lot of different situations. But when that happens, it's something that plays in your head over and over and over again. Getting to, wanting to have power over that person like they had power over you. So this is an incredibly incredibly healing moment for Allie and for her to like stand up for the other girls too because there's one testimony in here where this girl looks like she's about like 15 years old or something I can't believe it um this is just like such a great moment for her and I hope that she got a lot of healing from it realizing that you are a survivor of sexual abuse is really hard to put into words I cannot adequately capture the level of disgust I feel when I think about how this happened Larry you abused the power and trust I and so many others placed in you, and I am not sure I will ever come to terms with how horribly you manipulated and violated me. You were trusted by so many and took advantage of countless athletes and their families. The effects of your actions are far-reaching. Abuse goes way beyond the moment, often haunting survivors for the rest of their lives, yes. making it difficult to yes. trust and impacting their relationships. It is all the more devastating when such abuse comes at the hand of such a highly regarded doctor. Since it leaves survivors questioning the organizations yes. and even the medical profession yes. itself. Upon what, okay, what this essentially does to a person is, let's say something horrible happens, obviously it did, something horrible happens to her in Larry's office. If she speaks up and nothing happens, if it's happening to other girls and nothing happens, if it happens you in general you're sitting there looking around like why is nobody helping me how could this be happening this is the u.s gymnastics doctor he should be going through several walls of defense before he gets to me 
I'm an athlete for the United States Olympics. Like, it's like your brain just can't even fathom. Like, how could this be happening? And she questions everything. And that means she's going to question a lot of organizations in her future as well. And sorry, guys, obviously, you know, I always have a lot to say about this stuff, but I kind of want to just let her talk. I am here to face you, Larry, so you can see I've regained my strength, that I'm no longer a victim, I'm a survivor. I am no longer that little girl you met in Australia where you first began grooming and manipulating. As for your letter yesterday, you are pathetic to think that anyone would have any sympathy for you. <laughs> you think this is hard for you? Imagine how all of us feel. Imagine how it feels to be an innocent teenager in a foreign country, hearing a knock on the door, and it's you. Oh, no. Oh. I don't want you to be there, but I don't have a choice. Oh, no. Treatments with you were mandatory. Oh, no. You took advantage of that. You even told on us if we didn't want to be treated by you, knowing full well the troubles that would cause for us. Lying on my stomach with you on my bed, insisting that your inappropriate touch would help to heal my pain. The reality is you caused me a great deal of physical, mental, and emotional pain. You never healed me. You took advantage of our passions and our dreams. Damn. You made me uncomfortable, and I thought you were weird. But I felt guilty <laughs> okay, because okay. you were a doctor. So I assumed I was the problem. For th That's exactly, that is exactly what happens. When people in power abuse you, whether it be a parent, whether it be a teacher, anybody that you look up to, when people in power abuse you, a lot of times you'll just kind of blame yourself because everyone else is allowing it. I'm the kid. I'm naive. I'm not mature. They're in power. They must be right. I must deserve this. What a horrible thing to put on somebody. I wouldn't allow myself to believe that the problem is you. Mm -hmm. From the time we were little, we are, we are taught to trust doctors. You are so sick, I can't even comprehend how angry I feel when I think of you. You lied to me and manipulated me to think that when you treated me, you were closing your eyes because you had been working hard when you were really touching me, an innocent child, to pleasure yourself. Say it! Imagine Say feeling it. like hey, you have no it. power and no voice. Well, you know what, Larry? I have both power and voice, and I am only beginning to just use them. All these brave women have power, and we will use our voices to make sure you get what you deserve. A life of suffering spent replaying the words delivered by this powerful army of survivors. Yes! I am also here to tell you to your face, Larry, that you have not taken gymnastics away from me. I love this sport, and that love is stronger than the evil that resides in you and those who enabled you to hurt many people. You already know you're going away to a place where you won't be able to hurt anybody ever again. But I am here to tell you that I will not rest until every last trace of your influence on this sport has been destroyed like the cancer it is. I, I know I'm supposed to, I know this is like my channel and I'm supposed to be like narrating, but like honestly, talk your shit. Talk, like, yo, is this, is this super interesting? You got, yo, one in the chat, if, if she is slam dunking right now, I'm hooked on every single word and like while i'm watching this too i'm like damn i hope that like you know if there's some other really big piece of shit like this that like there's other survivors that can like unionize like this and like get their power back man your abuse started 30 years ago okay but that's just the first reported incident we know of if over these many years just one adult listened and had the courage and character to act this tragedy could have been avoided. I and so many others would have never, ever met you. Larry, you should have been locked up a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. Fact is, we have no idea how many people you victimized or what was done or not done that allowed you to keep doing it and to get away with it for so long. Over those 30 years, when survivors came forward, adult after adult, Many in positions of authority protected you, mm. telling each survivor mm. it was okay that you weren't abusing them. You motherfuckers. Fact, many adults had you convinced the survivors. And then they basically told the girls that, oh, that's not happening to you. And Larry's still here. So what does that do? It tells you that what he did to you is okay. And then it invalidates your reality. And then you just feel confused. This girl, the way she's talking, it's like she finally woke up. She knows it was wrong. 
She knows that she never deserved it. Those feelings of shame and guilt that she has, you know, walked this earth with are not hers to carry and she will give them back to Larry. I didn't mean to rhyme. I knew it was gonna, I knew it was gonna rhyme as it was coming out and I didn't mean for it to rhyme. I hate that. I hate it. This is like being violated all over again. How do you sleep at night? You were the decorated by USA Gymnastics and the United States Olympic Committee, both of which, which put you on advisory boards and committees to come up with policies that would protect athletes from this kind of abuse. You are the person they had, quote, take the lead of athlete care. You are the person they say, quote, provided the foundation for our medical system. I cringe to think that your influence remains in the policies that are supposed to keep athletes safe, that these organizations have for years claimed, quote, state of the art. To believe in the future of gymnastics is to believe in change. But how are we to believe in change when these organizations aren't even willing to acknowledge the problem? She's calling out the orgs and society too, as she absolutely should. Just like I was saying before, guys, trauma is an epidemic. And because of this one man, hundreds of women are now carrying feelings of guilt, shame. He just spread that trauma to 300 people. Think about that. Like, that's what I'm talking about when I say this shit, man. It's easy to put out statements talking about how athlete care is the highest priority, but they've been saying that for years, and all the while this nightmare was happening. False assurances from organizations are dangerous, especially when people want so badly to believe them. They make it easier to look away from the problem yeah. and enable bad things to continue to happen. And even now, after all that has happened, USA Gymnastics has the nerve to say the very same things it has said all along. Can't you see how disrespectful that is? Can't you see how much that hurts? A few days ago, USA Gymnastics put out a statement attributed to its president and CEO, Carrie Perry, saying she came to listen to the courageous woman and said, quote, their powerful voices leave an indelible imprint on me and will impact my decision as president and CEO every day. This sounds great, Miss Perry, but at this point, talk is cheap. You left oh. midway through the day and no one has heard from you or the board. Carrie, I have never met you, and I know you weren't around for most of this, but you accepted the position of president and CEO of USA Gymnastics, and I assume Talk by now shit. you are very well aware of the weighty responsibility you've taken okay. on. Unfortunately, you've taken on an organization that I feel is rotting from the inside, and while this may not be what you thought you were getting into, you will be judged by how you deal with it. Yep. Okay. I want to know A word of advice. Afterwards. Continuing to issue statements of empty promises, thinking that will pacify us, will no longer work. Yesterday, USA corporations, they love to put out these little PR statements and they know how to, they know how to minimize everything. They're like defense attorneys just to keep everyone at bay, just to keep them all at bay. Imagine trying to hide a scandal like this where hundreds of women were molested, manipulated, and sexually abused by one of your top ranking doctors. Like imagine. I, and you guys know how hard it is to get accountability from your mom. Like, imagine these motherfuckers just putting out a PR statement. I'm so mad I'm just sitting here holding a drumstick. Fuck this guy. Announced that it was terminating its lease at the ranch, where so many of us were abused. I am glad that it is no longer a national team training site, but USA Gymnastics neglected to mention that they had athletes training there the day they released the statement. Call them the fuck out because also i need y'all to think about this for a minute imagine you're in ali's position and you have been assaulted by this man for many many years and so have your friends and at this point tens of your friends can you believe it and then they put out a statement and they say hey that place where you guys are abused we're canceling the lease do you feel better now? We're still training over there today. We're still training today, but we, we canceled the lease. And then we're, we're gonna use the facility for like eight or nine more months where everyone was traumatized and we're gonna like take them back there. But after that, we're gonna end, we're gonna end it. So you guys, can you guys drop it now? Yeah, of course not. That's, how, that's why she feels this way. USA Gymnastics, where is the honesty? Where is the transparency? Why must the manipulation continue? Neither USA Gymnastics nor the USOC have reached out to express sympathy or even offer support. Not even to ask, how did this happen? What do you think we can do to help? Larry was the Olympic doctor and he molested me at the 2012 London Olympic Games. They say now they applaud those who have spoken out, but it's easy to say that now. When the brave women who started speaking out back then, more than a year after the USOC says they knew about Nasser, they were dismissed. 
Mm. At the 2016 Olympic Games, the president of the USOC said that the USOC would not conduct an investigation and even defended USA Gymnastics Whew. as one of the leaders in developing policies to protect athletes. That's the response a courageous woman gets when she speaks out. And when others joined those athletes and began speaking out with more stories of abuse, were they acknowledged? No. It is like being abused all over yes. again. Yes, it really I is. I have represented the United States of America in two Olympics and have done so successfully. And both USA Gymnastics and the United States Olympic Committee have been very quick to capitalize and celebrate my success. But did they reach out when I came forward? Mm -mm. No. She calling everybody So out. at this point, talk is worthless to me. We're dealing with real lives in the future of our sport. We need to believe this won't happen again. For this sport to go on, we need to demand real change, and we need to be willing to fight for it. It's clear now that if we leave it up to these organizations, history is likely to repeat itself. Mm. To know what changes are needed requires us to understand what exactly happened and why it has and happened. And to accept it. That is another thing, too. These organizations want to deny the full reality of it right? They want to only accept 20%. They want to minimize it. They want to forget the other 80. But if you don't accept every single thing that happened, and, and you know what? It's kind of almost like having those really uncomfortable conversations in life. Like here's just a smaller scenario where you don't want to have, you don't want to take all that accountability and have that uncomfortable conversation. But once you do it, everything is so much better, right? But when you only take parts of it that you want, that make you feel okay, and then, you know, leave them over here, like out in the cold, it's never going to get better. And your victims are going to get angrier and they will seek retribution against you. You cannot, you cannot hide forever. Look, I'm telling you right now, if you really piss somebody off, they will get you. This is the only way to learn from these mistakes and make gymnastics a safer sport. If ever there was a need to fully understand a problem, it is this one right now. To yeah. accept that problem is limited to just what we know now is irresponsible, delusional even. Each new day seems to bring a new survivor. We have no idea just how much damage you caused, Larry, and we have no idea how deep these problems go. Now is the time to acknowledge that the very person who sits here before us now, who perpetrated the worst epidemic of yeah. sexual abuse in the history of sports, yes. who is going to be locked up for a long, long time. This monster was also the architect of policies and procedures that are supposed to protect athletes from sexual abuse for both USA Gymnastics and the USOC. You know what else is really disgusting? The number one responsibility is to make sure that he doesn't sexually assault them. What happened to all of these women is the worst possible thing that could have happened. All you gotta do is talk, talk to the girls. Talk. Did people really like Larry that much? Who the fuck was he fooling? I don't understand. He wasn't paying anybody off. He wasn't a funny guy. Who, who the fuck was defending Larry? For what? This is fucking embarrassing. This is embarrassing and all of the people in this organization should absolutely be humiliated. And it should be known that they were a part of the, gym, the Olympics gymnastics team and all this shit during the years that Larry Nassar was in, that he was in power. If we are to believe in change, we must first understand the problem and everything that contributed to it. Now is not the time for false reassurances. We needed an independent investigation of exactly what happened, what went wrong, and how it can be avoided for the future. Full accountability. Only then can we know what changes are needed. Only then can we believe such changes are real. Your Honor, I ask you to give Larry the strongest possible sentence which his actions deserve. For by doing so, you will send a message to him and to other abusers that they cannot get away with their horrible crimes. Yes. They will be exposed for the evil they are, and they will be punished to the maximum extent of the law. Let this, sen let this sentence strike fear in anyone who thinks it is okay to hurt another person. Abusers, your time is up. Mm. The survivors are here, standing tall, and we are not going anywhere. And please, Your Honor, stress the need to investigate how this happened so that we can hold accountable those who empowered and enabled Larry Nasser, so we can repair and once again believe in this wonderful sport. My dream is that one day, Everyone will know what the words Me Too signify, but they will be educated and able to protect themselves from predators like Larry, so that they will never, ever, ever have to say the words Me Too. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna Chat, 
is going on YouTube. Allie, we hope you're okay. <laughs> like, I know, I know, I know it's a long road, but do, yo, thank you. Thank you for speaking for all the victims of Larry and for, dude, I'm sure there's a lot of other people in here too that like just, she just spoke up for all of them too. Yes, yes, we love her, we love her. Father of victim lunges at Larry Nassar in court. <laughs> Come on, give us the dive, baby. Wanting retribution. And if you need to say him? something to help you, I'm more than willing to no. let you say something. All right, look, I don't even have a dad. And I know what that look is, okay? <laughs> that look is, I'm going to kill that man. I mean, I think we can all, like all agree right now. They said, do you have anything to say? He ain't got nothing to say. He just got movement. In a courtroom, we, we, try, we don't use profanity, but if you have some words <laughs> that you would like to say, I would like to give you the opportunity to say that. I would ask you to, I need to as back part up. of the sentencing, I need to, back up. to grant me five minutes in a locked room of this. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Would you do that? Shut the fuck up. Yes or no? Yo. Would you give me one minute? You know that I can't do that. That's not how I legal. Well, I'm going to have to get stuck. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes. No. Don't hurt it. Don't hurt it. Don't. Dude. Let him go. I want that. He said, he said, I want that. Wait, hold on. Hold on, guys. I just need, just for clarity, I need to just play it again. I just need to make sure, because I'm not, like, it happened so fast. Minute. I don't know what happened. Hold on. Well, I'm going to have to get stuck on. Dude. Oh, my God. They rattled the desk in the courtroom. That would be me. That would be me. It really would be. 100%. No doubt. No questions asked. He's, he, at least he asked first. And you know what? He asked real politely. He said, Judge. Would you give me five minutes in a locked room with her? She said, sir, you know, I can't do that. Well, how about one minute? And she said, sir, I can't do that. Well, I'm going to have to take it myself. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. On Thursday of last week, I saw my doctor for a follow-up on sleep medication to help me with my nightmares. She told me about the trial and that her own daughters were testifying. I had never read any articles, watched any videos, or asked any questions before that. I did not want to know anything. Mm. I was in denial. Yep. But when I got home from that appointment, I got on my laptop and watched all three days of the trial so far. I stayed up for hours and sat there in shock. What I realized was that I am not an outlier. My story is so similar to many other girls. There were times where I felt like I was listening to myself. I was affected by Larry. I'm gonna cry. He did hurt me. And he hurt hundreds of other young women. I'm gonna cry. He took away my innocence, and that is something I will never be able to get back. Something so precious that was created by God with the purest of intentions was completely devalued by him. I feel sick just thinking about it. The little girl he called his favorite Fierce Five fan was in fact his victim. But thanks to the court, I will never be victimized by him again. And I will also never let him win. I will not take my own life. I'm going to take it back. I can tell she's really nervous right now, too. And, and like, when she's saying, um, you know, I had something that happened pretty recently. A friend and I were talking about it, and it was really weird. Uh, somebody said that I did something that, I, like, I didn't do. It, like, and, it, and I was, like, gaslit. Like, if you were gaslit as a kid a lot, like, or just your parents denied your reality, like, even as an adult, it can happen a lot. And... I just had this revelation this weekend, so I'm, I'm sorry if I can't articulate it that well. But what ended up happening was they told me that I did something uh, when I was drunk that I never did. And I had to go ask everyone that was there that night. And I found out this thing never happened, okay? Just period. But my friend that was there with me that night and knows that it never happened, it's like a ridiculous story. We sat there in my living room, and it's the weirdest thing ever. We knew that it didn't happen but for some reason, we were giving it the benefit of the doubt. And so with this situation with Larry, she knows that it was bad. But for some reason, she's giving him the benefit of the doubt. And when my friend and I come through this situation, we realized that we were 87% sure that this thing wasn't true. But we wanted to believe in the person that said it. We wanted to believe that they weren't lying. We wanted to believe that they were so good 
in some world that we held on to this 10% that they're still a good person and I must be the bad one, you know? And so that's kind of what I see in this like case with Larry. What he did was wrong, but everyone condoned it for so many years. There's still this 10% that she's holding out thinking like, I don't want to, I don't want to change this reality. I don't want to, I don't want to believe that you're bad. You know, it's, it's that same thing I talk about projecting our own morals onto other people. And I apologize guys, because I haven't fully fleshed out that, that kind of thought yet. It was something that just happened to me this past weekend. But when I hammer in on it a little bit more, I'll tell you guys, because I'm sure a lot of people deal with that too. I want my old self back. The me I was before Larry, I want to be joyous and confident again. Larry. You made me feel so special. Ah! I looked up to you so much. <laughs> you were the best in your field. Coaches and doctors ah. praised you for your abilities. Oh my god! I wanted to be just like you. You helped me heal the countless injuries I experienced in gymnastics. And not only did you help me heal... Okay, you here's the other thing that's really fucked up about this. He was a doctor, right? <sighs> I'm, I'm so fucking mad right now. The other thing that makes me mad about this is thinking about how many girls grew up with single moms or they didn't have a, a dad or something like this. And then they enter the gym, they enter gymnastics at like 10, 11, 12 or something. And this is the first male figure that's taking care of them. And then this is what he does to them. That really fucks me up. That fucks me up a lot. But the other thing, I don't even know what I was going to say. I'm just fucking mad right now. I'm so fucking mad. What, did, what was she about to say? Hold on. And not only did you help me heal, oh. you established a relationship with me. He was an actual doctor. These girls had actual injuries. Let's just assume that 65% of the time he's doing his job and then 35% of the time he's hurting them. Because it's, it's almost like a parent that's constantly abusing you but then saying nice things later. Well, the majority of their actions are good. The majority of their actions are okay. So I'm just going to forget these other ones. And that's... That's manipulative people giving a balance of good and bad just to keep you hanging on. My picture was a thank you with a thank you note was added to your wall because I thought you were the greatest. You gave us discounts, special visits, interacted with me on social media, and gave me gifts almost every other visit. I remember the day you gave me the 2012 Olympic tea towel from London with all of the girls' signatures on it. It brought tears to my eyes. I had just been told that yet again, I was sentenced to the sidelines and you cheered me up with a gift I truly treasured. Oh my God. It hung in a shadow box on my wall for years. You used your power to get close to me. You I'm fucking just a doctor. sick, dude. You were a trusted friend. And I think that is why I have been in denial for so long. I did not want to admit that you betrayed and deceived me. I still believed in you and had sympathy for you. How could I have been so naive? How could a person that I thought to be so genuine and kind and caring be in fact the opposite? I will never understand. But now that I have said that, I want you to look at me. I believe in forgiveness, Larry. Mm. You and I are human beings. I'm going to say this. Some people don't need to be forgiven. Forgiveness is, in this situation, it's for her. And she can decide that for herself to maybe release her from this. Maybe that's what she feels like. It's also culturally taught to us for some reason, especially in Christianity and in the United States, forgiveness to forgive and I want to remind you guys because I actually just went through something this past weekend that some people do not deserve to be forgiven and when they show you who they are they're probably going to do whatever they did to you again you don't have to forgive them just because Christianity tells you that you have to or America tells you that you have to you don't have to forgive them for shit let them rot in the hell that they put themselves in and then just move the fuck on although you have hurt me I want to forgive you mm. and feel closure and move on to and she, you. That, she wants to desperate life. her. I want you to apologize to me right here. I want to forgive you, but I also want to hear you tell me that you regret all the hurt that you caused. He said I'm sorry! Thank you. He said I'm sorry! No! 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 To USA no! Gymnastics. No! Don't let him apologize! Get the dad! Get, get, the, get the dad 
then jumped on him. Get another dad. Get all the dads. You know what? In fact, I love seeing the women testify. I want to see all the dads testify. <laughs> I need no security to be in the room right now. This is like another society thing too. We're kind of taught the steps of it are, I want you to apologize. I'm sorry. Okay, I forgive you. Do those beats really take away the pain of what happened to this girl? Like, I get it. That's a nice little schematic. But like, I don't even want you to say, I'm sorry. You know, I just don't. Michigan State University and John Getter, I have one thing to say to you. Don't you ever let this happen again. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. They are doing such a good job. It's, I feel like that's so hard. It is, I mean, you guys probably know. Dude, I got a question. Um, one in the chat, if you think that you would be able to approach the stand and make a victim impact statement, I know some of y'all would be happy to. Two in the chat, if you just feel like you're not that type of person and you would be a little more like reserved about it. Very curious. Wow, a lot of twos. Oh, my babies. Okay, well, I mean, that's normal too because we heard a lot of girls that were in here that like just now, um, she had just said, Emily, she said that she watched the trial for three days before she decided to speak up. And Allie almost didn't speak up either until she saw all the girls. So if you're a two, like, I get it, but I'm a one. I'm a one. I'll be up in that bitch. I might show up on the stand with some boxing gloves. I ain't gonna do nothing. I ain't gonna do nothing. But I'm gonna let you know how I feel. Visually. Respectfully. Not respectfully. I remember how afraid I was when I had to testify in Eaton County. <laughs> coming face to face with the defendant and his counsel for the first time. I remember how absolutely stunned and confused I was to be sitting there being questioned by a grown woman about this monster molesting me as a mm. young girl. I don't understand. I don't understand how you as a woman can listen to one girl, nonetheless, a hundred or two hundred, say that this is happening to them and then put out PR statements. I'm like, I'm pretty fucking bad right now. Pretty fucking bad. But then I looked at you, Shannon, and you're not even here today for me to look you in the eye. Oh, that must be her. As you so aggressively questioned me, a young girl, and wondered what possessed you to defend this man. What made you waste your hard work in law school on this despicable case? I watched these statements all week, and the camera turned to you and the defendant multiple times. Oh, maybe it's his attorney. I even saw the two of you smile. Damn it. I'm gonna have to ask her. What? Uh, she really object to you as victim at this point? Oh my god! <laughs> I feel it would be inappropriate to direct questions and comments of defense counsel. That, that's Shannon talking shit. Well. Defense counsel has a job to do. She can comment on it. I think you have thick enough skin to let it go where it should. Thank you. You may proceed. <laughs> the judge said, I think you have thick enough skin to handle the... Yes, girl, get your strength back. We got you. Smile. We got you. We got you. And you so gently place your hand on his shoulder. Okay. As consoling this monster. So ironic that somebody put their hand on her shoulder right before that. That's okay, though. That's okay. It's just a little ironic. <laughs> they didn't I'm know what so was coming. I'm so confused by your career path, and I do not respect you <gasps> or your choices. I will choose to be a role model to my children and young women, just like Angie, Robin, Andrea, and now Judge Aquilina have been for me and forever will be. So thank you. We have won this first battle, but our war is not over. MSU knows they are what they have coming. You know that you enabled and are accountable for ignoring complaints from the past, so I gladly say goodbye, Luanna Simon. Your time as president will be over, and shame on you for not listening to young women. Mm -hmm. I hope you spend the rest of your days thinking about your 9 to 16-year-old self and how it would have felt to be a sexually assaulted and speak out about it, only to be turned down. I actually plan on finishing my college career at MSU. Okay, let me say this real quick. Shannon Smith, Larry Nasser's attorney. A lot of times, in high-profile cases like this, attorneys will put themselves out there because this is a promotional piece for them, right? Um, 
So I would not be surprised if Shannon Smith was either a friend or somebody that intended to win this case and get some type of marketing or promotion off of this. It's also incredibly manipulative to make the defense attorney against all of these girls a woman. This was all a tactic. She accepted this position probably for marketing and publicity and she got fucking slam dunked at the end of it. Wonder what Shannon Smith is doing now. To USAG, I'm utterly saddened that a defendant has caused the sport of gymnastics to be tied to the weight of sexual abuse and child molestation. I am more disgusted that you knew of this and failed to act when you should have. You have failed to keep the sport of gymnastics safe and with the name it deserves. Mm -hmm. Gymnastics is a great sport and there are absolutely incredible coaches out there. They know who they are. They will be the ones to save this sport and I have no doubt about that. To John Getter, you, however, are not one of these great coaches. Mm -hmm. There's no excuse for you not knowing what was happening in your gym, except- You know, another thing too is this was a business. They treated all of these girls as just little components of the business that will be here for a couple years or a year or something and then cycle out. They, they didn't care. They treated them just like little components of the business. And of course, they're going to grow up and they're going to speak out and they have voices. Just because they didn't have a voice when they were 12 doesn't mean that they're not going to grow into it at 18 and get there. Look. How many of y'all have called out your abusers before? Okay, I called out I called out mine when I was 25. I called that bitch up on the phone. I said, hey, bitch. Felt great. Haven't thought about it ever since. I have always told myself, for everything you put me through, you will have what's coming. I do not believe you deserve to have your gym still. I and I don't myself. understand why anyone could still want to train there, especially knowing that in that backroom dungeon, hundreds of your athletes were being molested. To the Olympians. I thank you for coming forward, being so brave, knowing how much more the names, your names would have been in the media. I can't imagine the pressure you felt knowing how much I felt myself. And I need to say this to you all, that your legacy as Olympians will not go down with the Larry Nassar case. Mm. You will not be remembered as the Olympians that were molested by Larry Nassar. But as the gymnasts who are not only Olympians, yeah. but also heroes. Yes. He will not compromise your title that you worked so hard for, and we will not let him. And to the defendant, you ended up right where you always like to be. Number one sports medicine doctor. Mm -hmm. Number one gymnastics doctor in the country. What kind of life and now you're the world's number living? one child molesting pedophile. That has ever been discovered. Big facts! The number one! Just really quick beforehand, just so you guys kind of know, I just like to explain court structures. The, the judge is kind of like the referee. At least here on this channel, how I do things. You know, I sit here and commentate this like it's like a sports cast, you know? Like the prosecutor, the defense, all this kind of shit. I'm like, yeah, when they go fight, you know? The judge is kind of like the referee. And they don't really talk throughout most of the trial. They answer to objections, you know, they kind of like pass certain rules and whatnot. But at the end, right before sentencing, the judge is basically allowed to give like a monologue of everything that they've heard over the trial over their couple of days. You know, the defense's arguments, the prosecution's arguments, the victim impact statements, all of that of the nature. And then they get to say what they want to to the defendant. It's just a short statement. Oh um, God, it's his statement first. Your words these past several days, your words. <sighs> Don't, shut, shut up have had a significant emotional effect on myself and is shaking to my core. Oh no! Realizing what I did has had a significant emotional effect on myself and shaken me to my core? Accountability? Acceptable apology. Sir, you need to stop say turning. Stop apology. turning around. An acceptable apology to all of you. Is him turning around and facing the court is not him trying to take accountability for his actions and look everyone in the eye. It's manipulative. It's just, it's just manipulative. That's what he's trying to do. And the judge knows this. And she says, why don't you, why don't you stay right here? Why don't you stay in front of the microphone, bitch? I hope you are shaken to your core. Your victims are clearly shaken to their core. Here she goes. And I know there are still some who ask, are you broken because you got caught? Here she goes. Here she goes. 
First, let me address council. I agree with your words in regard to no one should blame defense counsel and vigilante crime is not tolerated. So I hope that no one will do anything untoward against Okay, counsel. I'm just saying, like, you know, she's a vigilante, you know, violence is not, the fact she even brought it up, because she knows, she knows when people are about to be mad. It doesn't matter what the defendant has done, but they have the right to counsel. She's mad. I also that. want to say, that being said, we also have the First Amendment. So you are all free to have your own opinion. So let me, I think this is what, what the judge just really said. What she kind of just did was dug into the legal system. She said, any defendant is allowed an attorney, no matter what they've done. We as a society haven't, you know, put certain structures in place. We haven't done this and this and this. And that's why you're here today. She's basically saying, you shouldn't even have a trial, motherfucker. You are no longer victims. You are survivors. You're very strong. And I've addressed you individually. Before I say anything further, I don't know if you all know this. And I know that the world is watching. Also, okay, sorry. I, I know we've been using the word survivor for a long time and that's very good and very sweet and like technically I'm a survivor but I don't like being called that. I'm a bad bitch and every single one of those women that want to stand, they are bad bitches. You know, and if you're in that category, you know, you can, you can take survivor if you want but also I'm going to offer you a new title. A bad bitch. One in ten children will be sexually abused by their 18th birthday. One in seven girls one in 25 boys by their 18th birthday. I've talked about this before, and we talked about this in the Turpin case. Um, when you're in high school, when you're in middle school, some of you guys, some of you guys are younger. Um, you probably won't see this as much in college, but also, if you're older too, teach your children this as well. When they spot that kid that acts a lot differently than everyone in school, somebody needs to ask why. If their clothes are dirty, if they're wearing the same things every day, if they're not getting their work done, if they don't have the supplies, if they act small and they act sheltered, if they're startled by every single thing, our children are the people that are sitting in the lunchrooms with these kids. And for some reason, they're taught to judge them and call them the weird kid instead of being their friend, maybe letting them know that they're normal and it's okay to talk and then hopefully, maybe eventually helping them feel okay enough to get the help they need. Um, so please, if you're in school, look out for those people, be nice, and teach your children not to judge them, and instead pay attention. It stops now. Speak out like these survivors yes. become part of the army. I do one case at a time, and I really so very much appreciate all of your thank yous. I've read some of the Twitters and Facebooks and all of what's going on in the media. This is such I'm a heavy one, but it's so important. It's so job. important. If you come into my courtroom any Wednesday and watch sentencing, I give everybody a voice. Thank you. I give defendants a voice, their families when they're here. I give victims a voice. I try to treat everybody like family because that's the justice system that I was raised to believe in. I came to this country stateless. I'm naturalized. My father's Maltese, my mother's German. I love her. I was her. raised on old country values. And my grandmother always told me and my parents always told me, my grandfather too, that America is the greatest country. I believe that. That's why I served in the military. That's why I've always done community service. Oh, shit. I'm not really well liked because I speak out. Imagine Larry like going to court and they're like, do you guys know anything about the judge? Yeah, dude, she was a fucking Marine. <laughs> I don't have many friends because I speak out. If you ask me a question, I, 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 facts. you better be ready for the answer. Facts. That's why people don't like me. Don't care. I care sometimes. I but for the most part, I don't. I want change. 
God, I relate. Because I don't believe in hiding the truth. Yes. And I'm not saying I'm always right, but I try. Yes. I also don't believe that one size fits all when it comes to sentencing. Yes. Another reason I listen. Yes. I know that there are some judges for every crime that give the same punishment. I don't think that's justice. We, I mean, we need an email for her. Sentencing, I follow the Constitution. Okay, dude, this makes me cry almost because of what she said in the beginning. She said, I don't have many friends because I say it, I call it how it is and people don't like that. I don't need friends. They disappoint me. I relate to that so, 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 so much on so many different levels. I talk all the time about being a really like empathetic person or a really sensitive person. And I tend to smell the bullshit and I can't unsmell it, okay? Like I, you heard the phrase ignorance is bliss before. I wish I didn't see some of the things that I see. And because of that, I don't have a lot of friends because I know what you're really saying or what you're really doing. And after a while, I'm gonna call you out on your shit. But why am I gonna call you out on your shit? For change. And that's what people hate. They hate the accountability. They hate the uncomfortable conversations, but the accountability and the uncomfortable conversations lead to great change for yourself and the people around you because you make contact with people every single day. I don't give a fuck about anyone's self-serving agenda. I'm here to lift the whole ship up. And if you're sinking the ship, I will cut you down, period. And that's how I operate. And that's how I've always operated. It's been a problem for me in Los Angeles, but I will not stop. And now <laughs> I do my own shit now. So I relate, I love her. The media has asked me to release your letter. I'm not going to do that. Because no. Council may object, the media may object, but there is some information in here that troubles me in regard to the victims. He tried to disregard them. And I don't want them re-victimized by the words that you have in here. Basically what she just said is that Larry Nassar wrote a little letter that discredited the victims and gave himself sympathy. And the judge made a call to not let that letter be released to the media. It's sealed. He will never get his little excuses out there. Great fucking call from the judge. But I do want to read some more of your letter. <laughs> And the reason I want to do that is because I've considered it in sentencing as an, extent, as an extension of your apology <laughs> and whether I believe it or not. <laughs> so I want you to- My God. Okay, I gotta break this down again. So what the judge did was she denied his full letter getting out to the media, basically his side of the story, like his final words. However, she is going to read part of the letter and she's taking out the excerpts that she knows are manipulative and she's going to apply that to how Larry really feels. So there were two versions of this in court. Larry perpetrated how he felt, you know, to the judge and the jury. And then he also wrote this letter that he was expecting to get out to the media. And the things he said in court and the things in this letter are incongruent. And she's saying, I'm going to combine the two. The federal judge went ballistic at sentencing since I pled guilty to the state cases and spent 10% on the federal case and 90% on the state cases and civil suits. She gave me 60 years instead of Her five to 20 years, in parentheses, three consecutive 20-year sentences. I pleaded guilty to possession of porn from 9-2004 to 12-2004, four months. The prosecutor even admitted that I never belonged to any porn sites, any chat rooms, was not on the dark web. People that are pedophiles know that the things they're looking at are wrong. They know the videos they are downloading are wrong. They know the videos they have taken are wrong. The videos they possess, they are wrong. And they are in layers and layers and layers of hidden hard drives somewhere in a fucking under a floorboard in a closet. So for him to sit here and say, well, you know, they, they didn't really find anything. Yeah, it's because you're a fucking pervert and you knew it and you hid it well. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. 
Oh. It is just a complete nightmare. The stories that are being fabricated to sensationalize this, then the AG would only accept my plea if I said what I did was not medical and was for my own pleasure. They forced me to say that or they were going to trial and not accepting the plea. I wanted to plead no contest, oh my God. but the AG refused that. Her tone. I was so manipulated <laughs> by the AG. <laughs> and now, Aquilina. Holy shit! This is a fucking. This, do you know what I'm talking about? How this is the most pivotal moment in the entire fucking world. Larry Nassar's attorney was like, you need to write this letter, run for the media, and then this is going to be your statement and your apology, right? And now he's here, and the judge is reading out excerpts of the manipulative parts, and everyone's fucking laughing at him. Oh, my God. Wait, let's hear it again. AG, Honestly, that level I of humiliation is well-deserved. No but the AG refused that. I was so manipulated <laughs> by the AG. <laughs> and now Aquilina... And Her, all Judge I Aquilina, was to minimize stress to oh! financial reward. Uh, uh, that page turned girl stop. Look, stop. I can't. Not again. She ain't have to turn the page like that, but she did. Come on. Come on. Would you like to withdraw your plea? No, Your Honor. Because you are guilty, aren't you? <laughs> are you guilty, sir? I said my plea, exactly. Just like her. Just like this judge is dedicated to justice, which she really is, I believe. She has demonstrated it, and she'll demonstrate it in this sentencing. She probably comes from either something's happened to her or maybe she comes from a family that's just like that. And my God, a family of doctors and judges that is actually out here to help the world. Oh, we need those people. You, sir, decided to plead because there was no medical treatment. You did this for your pleasure and your control. This letter, which comes two months after your plea, tells me that you have not yet owned what you did, that you yep. still think yep. that somehow you are right, that you are a doctor, that you're entitled, that you don't have to listen, and that you did treatment. I wouldn't send my dogs to you, sir. I want you guys just to watch this woman over here on the side for a second. Just watch this. Y'all see that gulp? That's when you know your client's going to jail! There has to be a massive investigation as to why there was inaction. Yeah. Why there was silence. Yep. Justice requires more than what I can do. That I was about to say that. She probably feels like the other people in this organization need to be questioned and they must be brought to justice. Absolutely. That's how I feel. I love justice. You know, some people are like, why is this woman smiling and carrying on in the Julie video? Because I love justice and I will smile. Justice. <laughs> Sir, you knew you had a problem. That is clear to me. Uh, that's the first that's the first you time you made an expression. You were a very young age, even before you were a doctor. That's the first that's the first time he reacts. You did not. That's it. That's you the first shocked. fucking time. You played on everyone's vulnerability. Yes. I'm not vulnerable. Mm. Not to you. Not to other criminals at that podium. I swore to uphold the Constitution and the law, and I am well trained. I know exactly what to do. She said, You're not going to get me. This time I'm going to do it. And I want you to know, as much as it was my honor and privilege to hear the sister survivors, it is my honor and privilege to sentence you. Because, sir, you do not deserve to walk outside of a prison ever again. 
You have done nothing to control those urges, and anywhere you walk, destruction will occur. Yes. To those most vulnerable. Sir, I'm giving you 175 years, oh. which is 2,100 months. Sometimes you just gotta grab something. <laughs> I've just signed your death warrant. I, I need Sign everyone it. to be quiet. I sell contempt powers. I told you I'm not nice. <laughs> I find that you don't get it, that you're a danger. You remain a danger. I am a judge who believes in life and rehabilitation when rehabilitation. I have a question. One in the chat, if you know for a fact that your abuser would also hold out until the very end. Here is Larry in front of the judge after hundreds of women have spoke out. Millions of people have condemned him. Everyone has frowned upon him. Dads want to beat his ass and he still is sitting here like he didn't do a goddamn thing fucking thing. We are taught that this is how we get justice for the bad things that are done to us. But as you can see by all of the ones, there are plenty of us that know our person would never give us the accountability we deserve. There needs to be a new schematic. There needs to be a new schematic on how we take our power back and we move past this. What do we need? What does that new schematic look like? How do we heal on our own without participation from our abusers? That needs to be a conversation.